Beyond the Wrench with Jay Ganinen from Wrenchway. Welcome to Beyond the Wrench. My name is Jay Ganinen and I am your host. On this week's episode, we were joined by Madeline Van't Hoff, who is an automotive technician at Don Miller Subaru East here in Madison, Wisconsin. Uh, really cool episode because uh, Madeline is a young female entering the industry and we talk about her experience in getting into the industry, what even made her uh, kind of come into this business in general, uh, what her experience has been along the way. And she has some really, really interesting insight into how it is uh, growing up in this industry, right? And she's really at the beginning stages of this. And one of the really cool parts about the podcast is Madeline talking about who she looks up to and some of the mentorship in her shop that she's currently in. And uh, she's got a busy schedule and it was a really, really fun conversation to have to kind of understand what it's like to be a young person coming into this industry right now. Uh, the, this week's episode is sponsored by our friends at Full Bay. Uh, if you haven't heard of Full Bay, it's an industry-leading software solution for heavy-duty repair shops. This cloud-based app is loaded with features that will let you leave the shop for a long overdue vacation. Uh, also want to be uh, sure to check out Full Bay's free ebook, How to Start a Mobile Repair Shop. The ebook has some really good, uh, great information and will walk you through everything you need to know on starting a mobile repair shop. More information and links can be found in the show notes. And uh, our friends at Full Bay have uh, always put out really, really good content, uh, and uh, this is no exception. So make sure you go check out the ebook and uh, listen to this podcast. I think it gives you uh, a lot of insight into how young people think and how you can better improve their lives. Enjoy this week's episode with Madeline. On this week's episode, really excited to welcome Madeline Van't Hoff to the show. Uh, Madeline's got some pretty unique perspective uh, as a young person coming into the industry and uh, just a, a lot of fun to talk to. So how are you doing this morning, Madeline? I'm doing pretty good, how are you? I am fantastic. Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, what uh, what are you up to? And, and uh, you've got kind of a unique schedule right now, right? Because you're, you're juggling a few different things. Yeah, so I have not graduated high school yet, but through a STEM Academy program at my high school, I'm allowed to take dual credit courses at MATC. And typically that is where you do the LATS program or the liberal arts degree transfer program. However, because I know what I want to do, I was able to take the automotive program uh, courses instead of taking a uh, higher gen ed levels. Yeah. So I'm also an express technician at a Subaru dealership. So I am all over. <laughs> <laughs> well, and it's it's cool because uh, you, you didn't start off with uh, a background in cars, right? No, I did not. I originally wanted to be a computer programmer. <laughs> So a little, little shift in direction, little pivot. Uh, what, what caused that? What got you interested in working on cars? So my sophomore year of high school, I needed another um, extra credit. And for me, I was, I was browsing around the courses and I saw an automotive technology course by uh, Jim Halverson. And I thought, you know what? Maybe I should learn a little bit about how to maintain a vehicle, you know, because everybody is in a car for a lot of their lives. So I took the class and it was, it felt like everything just clicked. And that was the moment I was like, this is what I want to do with my life. That's crazy. So something that you, you kind of took by chance ended up being what's maybe going to drive your career as we move forward. I mean, it, to to know that it felt that good in terms of, hey, you know what, this stuff's cool. Like this, this is uh, something that I could see myself doing. What, what was it about the shop that got you uh, excited? Was it, you know, just being able to, to start to tear into cars, seeing how things worked? Or what was it that really just kind of uh, clicked with you? 
it was definitely the how things work because before you're really introduced to this side of the automotive world you're kind of like yeah my car runs the wheels spin when i go I, i push on the gas and you know it goes faster but the whole inner workings of an engine and how your axles are put together i mean your whole rack system like just how those things interact together and how a problem with one thing can affect a whole nother thing. It was just, I loved the problem solving and the puzzling things together to really find out what was the issue and putting things together with my hands. Let me tell I like getting my hands dirty. I nice. like at the end of, at the end of doing a job and I look down at my hands and I see them just dirty as heck. <laughs> I feel like I did a good job. <laughs> that is so cool. And uh, was it something where, you know, when you look back and and maybe you're thinking, okay, if coding was going to be my career, I'm just going to be sitting behind a computer and maybe that's just not as appealing or not as exciting to me. It Was it just kind of seeing something that was different where you could work with your hands? Yeah, it definitely was. I mean, you're still sort of working with your hands when you're a computer programmer. I mean, you're at the mm-hmm. keyboard, but it was it was just the fact that I was it's hands on. I mean, you're actually moving your entire body. I, you're not just sitting, you're not stationary for a long period of time. And I really and it's the movement that really got me into it. I was a receptionist for a while. And one of the main reasons I did not like being receptionist was because I did not like sitting in my chair for seven hours at a time. I I get that. I I, I started my career off as a technician. And now for the last, I guess, 20 years have been behind a computer all day. And there are days where I'm like, man, it would be nice just to be out working on something like it, it. doing something a little bit different. So I can totally respect that. Uh, Where did you get kind of the work ethic early on, like to even go be a receptionist? What was it that drove you to to want to get a job? Was it just making a few bucks to to go out on Friday night? Or was it like, hey, I just want to start learning skills or give me an idea of what drove you to want to get a job? I was bored. I mean, (laughs) All of my friends had jobs and I didn't have a lot to do during the summer. And I was kind of just, just kind of wallowing in my room a lot because I didn't see my friends and I wasn't getting out of the house. And I was like, you know what? I think it's time. I can, it was, it was the summer before I turned 17. So I could drive. Yeah. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to go search for a job. And the whole thing was I wanted something automotive related, even though I was, I was 16. Nobody really wants a 16 year old in their shop, unfortunately. (laughs) So my only option was either being a detail tech or a receptionist. And I don't know about you, but Detailing is not my forte. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I was better at it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So uh, walk me through the uh, the process. And, and for those of you, when she says she goes to MATC, uh, that's Madison Area Technical College. It's a, a, a local school to Madison, uh, lo- local tech school to Madison. Uh, when do you start the process? Because some prairie uh, where you go to high school has a really good automotive program uh, where where was the transition from, okay, I'm taking uh, automotive classes in high school to, okay, uh, now I'm taking college level classes uh, in the uh, automotive technology space? So it was, a, it was a really interesting transition because my, the end of my sophomore year was cut short because of COVID. Ah, yeah. So I didn't actually end up finishing like in the lab, my high school automotive course. So, and then I had about half a year of limbo, half a year of just gen eds of not being in the shop. And that was very frustrating. Cause I was like, I just found what I really want to do. And now I'm stuck behind my computer doing math. <laughs> so I, one of the first classes that they will have you do at um, 
the technical college is they'll have you take uh, electricity one and two. All right. And it was just, it was so much more in depth. I mean, when you're in high school, it's you get the overview of things and they teach you how to do things. And luckily we had a block schedule at my high school. So we had about like an hour to be in the shop, which was good, but it doesn't mean that you're getting the full knowledge of the thing that you're working on. So just having one, like two classes um, just for electricity, it really it really taught you the in-depth and the um, different things that you really needed to know and even some little like tricks and tips. So it was it was a lot more in depth for you. Was it overwhelming at all? Sometimes. I mean, I I've always been kind of above my grade level before in my classes. And it was it was an interesting switch, um, especially from a completely like online environment to being in the shop and doing stuff with your hands all the time. We have four hour block classes there. So you get a lot of time in the shop, which means you can get a lot done. <laughs> So as you're transitioning, so you, you, you kind of had a, you, you had the background, at least a, a high level overview in high school of electrical systems or of electricity in general, right? Maybe Ohm's law. Do you, did you get into like Ohm's law in high school or was that more when you went off to tech school? It was when I went off to tech school. Okay. Um, pretty much the overview we got about electricity was if you see a wire that's rubbed through um that's a problem <laughs> <laughs> yeah which is tough right because you're you're in our blocks and it's really we we talk to a lot of high school instructors right and i think one of their uh hardest things is that you you've got to cover a bunch of stuff uh and you're just trying to at least give that high level overview but some of the stuff is really, really hard to just get into or get really in depth with. And, and, and being an educator, that's one of the things we as a company want industry to do better with schools is to get involved and help them, you know, if maybe they need a, a class on uh, doing electrical diagnostics at the high school level and you can do, you know, a hour long voluntary workshop at night or something like that. Like there's there's opportunities out there uh, to generate that interest from young people, and I think what's fascinating about you and your background and, and where I am excited to have you on the show is uh, you are a smart young person, right? And you are somebody that uh, didn't have a background in this industry, and so being able to draw you into the industry is exciting for me because I think that shows that our industry has make as is, is making progress. Like we're, we're getting more welcoming. Uh, and just in general, just, I don't know, I, when you got into a shop, right. And so putting all these pieces together, you've got the school, two different school aspects of high school, the tech school, and then the shop. When, well, Juan, how do you make this work? How do you how do you have all of these pieces? How does your schedule look over the course of a week? I, I need to ask that before I dive into the other yeah. question. So every other day I have a band class at my high school, and that's just for me to do our marching band through the summer. So every other morning I go to the high school, and every other morning I go to work. And then Fridays I have a biology class in the morning, and then every day during the work week, um, it is 12.30 to 4.20 automotive. Really? Yes. And that's at that part is at the tech school then? Yes, it is. All right. That's, that's really cool. I mean, to be able to juggle all of these things along with a work schedule uh, is, is fascinating. Now, one common complaint I hear about uh, from young techs is getting put in the Lou Bay and they feel like they're just never going to progress into the actual shop. Uh, 
where do you stand at right now with that? I mean, is it something where you're like, oh, I, I got to get out of Lupe? Or is it something where you're like, I, I can learn some stuff here. Like, this is this is good. I, I've definitely learned, like, so much in the express area. Um, I mean, I've seen... I've seen things that I never thought I would see. I mean, a car coming in with a completely shredded uh, serpentine belt. Um, I mean, different electrical problems. Like, I've seen so much. I mean, and one thing is when we see problems on a vehicle, we have to go and grab a main shop technician to come and confirm and diagnose what we're seeing. And lucky for me, a lot of our main shop technicians go, okay, what do you think it is? So we get that kind of like, oh, I got to use my brain real quick. <laughs> but I mean, I've been, I've been at my job for seven months. So I've been in the express lane for seven months and I've known, I've, some of my coworkers have been there for more than like a year and a half. Sure. But I mean... My bread and butter is oil and tire rotations. So it's it's a little monotonous and you kind of just hope, you just hope that maybe you get an interesting one through the door or something. <laughs> but nope, and the next car is always gonna be an oil rotate. Well, I, and I think it's so important for young people to understand that part too, right? I I was in that position where I was like just chomping at the bit. I want to do advanced diagnostics. Well, I wasn't ready for advanced diagnostics, and uh, you know, I I think there's so there's such a rush to get into like the the main shop uh, in in a dealership setting specifically. But man, is there so much you can learn in that express bay, right? And maybe even it is that serpentine belt or having that technician come over and say, what do you think it is? And then talking through that problem with you. Uh, I think there's there's a lot of impact in that. Do you, do you feel like that adds a lot to you when that tech comes over and, and kind of helps you think through it rather than just giving you the answer? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's it's nice having someone who essentially you look up to because they're in the spot that you want to be at and them like them asking you what you think is such like a oh, okay. I can do this. Yeah. And I mean, if you have the confidence, you I mean, and you know what you're talking about, you will most likely have the same, like, end diagnosis as the main shop technician will be. And if you're wrong, so what? You have a new thing you learned that day. Yes. And it's just, you're just constantly bringing in new information because express techs are the people who see your car the most. I mean, depends on the car, but every six months, 6,000 miles, we see your car. Yeah. Yeah, and I I actually had a dealer principal tell me that to him, the folks in the Lube Bay were the most important people in his shop, in like in his dealership, because the way that he phrased it is one, they'll touch the most vehicles throughout the course of a day uh, by far. And uh, two, by having those people that do a really good job at that end and are working their way into the shop, it, it just helps them, uh, one, the, the experienced techs can do their experienced tech stuff, right? But then uh, you, you are kind of slowly bringing somebody along that's familiar with the facilities, that's familiar with where tooling might be at, uh, is comfortable with the other people that are in the shop. I think that's, you know, I, I'm interested to hear your perspective from that side where going into a shop, I, I know this is any job you're going to go into, right? But that first week or two is super awkward. Was it awkward for you when you first came in or was it just like, hey, you know what, I'm, I'm all good. I, I'm, I'm gonna run with it. It was, it was awkward. It definitely <laughs> was. Um, just because, I mean, I knew how to do oil changes. I knew how to rotate tires, but had I done multiple cars in an hour before, no, not really. And I mean, you'll you'll pretty much find this with every dealership you go to, but they have certain like steps in order that they want you to follow. And it was it wasn't so much like 
I don't know how to do any of this. It was like, oh, wait, I have to do this before I can do this, and then I have to do this in the way that they want me to do it. And it, it wasn't, it was just a learning curve in the way that you had to do it the way the company wanted to do it. Yeah. And you can't just go full steam ahead and just do whatever you want. And I think they did a really nice job there with you then because not every, not every shop will do that. And I think it's important to know the order in which things go or the process. We, on this podcast specifically, talk about process a lot. But having somebody like you who is inexperienced come in and be able to see, you know, the order in which things are done, uh, I think can be really helpful because it, you might think of it one way. Now, the one thing I would ask is, are you able to ask questions about the process? Uh, maybe, okay, why do we do it this way? Because I feel like from my perspective back, you know, 20 something years ago when I was a young technician, if I could ask why we did something one certain way, it meant a lot more to me than just saying, do it this way. Does that mm -hmm. make sense? Yeah. Yeah, I get you. Um, so it's one of the like big whys, I guess, is that we talk about this a lot at school. If you have a process, there is less of a chance for you to miss things. Yes. So if you always have this routine that you get into, First, you fill up all your fluids, then you put the blocks under your car, you raise it up, and then you crack the drain plug, and while the oil's draining, you go around and get your tread and fill up the tires. Like, there's less of a chance for you to miss the crucial steps such as torquing the drain plug, torquing the wheels, making sure that they are at the right position, like the correct rotation. It's, that's a big, like, why for me, and also, um... The why, I asked, I asked this, um, like, why do we do oil before we do tires? And it's because you can multitask while the oil is draining, but to get the tires, um, to take them off, um, you have to have them kind of at chest height, and you don't really want to crawl underneath the vehicle and get a crick in your back. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. And back injuries are one of the top injuries for technicians, so that, that, uh, that's smart to do, you know, have everything in line. But I think for, I, I think you hit it on the head there where if you're thinking about the why and why I'm doing this process the way I am, and if you know that, it makes you, in my eyes, more comfortable actually doing the process, right? Like if, if you know you're doing it this way so that you don't miss steps, that has some impact. If you don't know why you're doing it and it's just, and we see a lot of shops that make this mistake where just do it that way because that's what we wrote up. Don't ask questions, just do it. And it, it almost dehumanizes a technician, but like also it just, I think it's just nice to know why I'm doing something. Like, why am I doing it this way? And if it's, hey, it just makes you, if you're cracking the drain plug first, uh, it's going to make you more efficient. You're going to be able to get multiple vehicles out in an hour rather than, you know, trying to, do tires first and then the oil, you know, like I, I remember as a young tech, that was one of the things that was most impactful to me. And that's where, when we talk about mentors in a shop, that is so impactful to have somebody you feel comfortable asking, you know, why do we do it this way? Uh, because I think that helps you get an understanding and, and grasp that. And I think it segues nicely into my next uh, ask or next question is, the role of mentors for a young person, like when you're coming in the shop, how important is it to you to have people that you feel comfortable asking a question to? Like unbelievably important. And I mean, at first you feel like, oh gosh, I'm, I'm interrupting them and I'm going to take them away from their work. And it's honestly, it's not like that. It just isn't. You, you see a problem on your car, you walk over and you say, hey, when you have a moment, can you please come and check this out? And whenever they have a moment, they'll just walk over and a majority of the time they'll explain it to you. And that is super helpful. And another thing that we do is when it's slow in the express lane, sometimes you can just walk over to one of the main shop techs and be like, hey, what are you working on? And they'll go through it with you. I mean, 
I'm I'm glad that I work at a place where questions are not demonized because I feel I feel like sometimes they're like you're in school you should know this and <laughs> if you don't then you're stupid and you're not listening and your degree was worthless but I mean sometimes it's been a long long time since you've taken that course how, how do you how do you do that that was one thing I always struggled to get my hands around is maybe I'll learn the theory of or operation the theory, theory of operation on something especially when it comes to uh, electricity and the different types of sensors and the, the different types of uh, just everything, componentry in general. Uh, but maybe you learned about it a year ago and now you're trying to apply it and trying to think back. Uh, any advice to maybe uh, other young techs that are out there on ways to remember something that you learned six months to a year ago but are applying today? I mean, sometimes all it takes is just looking up a like a YouTube video on it, like a quick five minutes, like, somebody just going through all of the concepts of electricity just really quickly. Sometimes you, you don't necessarily need it in depth when you've forgotten it. You just need to be reminded of what you forgot and then you can put the rest together there. Yeah. I mean, another thing is in your courses, you're gonna get a lot of papers handed to you and you're gonna be so tempted just to throw them in the recycling bin. But I mean, maybe, Maybe some of those sheets you should keep for a little bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I think it, it's good. We've gotten so digital now too, right? It, which is, I, I remember when I was going through school, uh, we had all the books and the, uh, everything was written down in a, in a notepad or you took physical notes. Uh, is it still, I mean, you still have some element of that or has it gone all digital where you're, every, everything you're doing is like coursework through, whether it's uh, your high school or your tech school, uh, is, it, is it gone more electronic or do you have the ability to kind of hold on to paper still? So we actually do quite a bit with paper still. Um, some of, most of our homework is online and we use a program called Electude in my current course. Mm -hmm. um, so that's what we do our homework on. However, in class, we get handed quite a few papers I mean, we get handed different lab sheets that your instructor has to sign off once you've completed what the lab sheet tells you to do. And I think that's, it's really helpful because so, sometimes when it comes to digital things, people are more forgetful. Like it just, it slips your mind easier than when you have it. So having your folder full of that paper that you get and then being like, oh yeah, I have to do drum breaks. So I complete the lap because it's for, it's for points. It's for credits. Interesting. All right. Um, do you, and I'm kind of hopping back and forth between the shop and the school here, and it's just because you've got everything intertwined and it does feel like there's kind of that mixture. Um, how much pressure do you feel when you go into a, a dealership into the express loop? So you're going from school and what you're learning in school uh, to in the same day into the dealership to work, do you feel pressure to, to perform uh, right off the bat or is it something where you, you, you do have a little leeway or you do have a little runway to be able to, to get yourself up to speed? I mean, essentially what I do in the express lane is like, I've already learned that stuff and I'm already really comfortable with it. So what I'm learning in my uh, courses right now, I'm currently in a breaks class. Oh yeah. So while I'm while I'm doing drum breaks and I'm doing disc breaks and I'm lathing and I'm machining and all of that, it's not something that I'm really able to apply to my job currently because that's just not what express technicians do. So right. I don't feel any pressure to perform, but I mean, once it's easier. It's nice to have the knowledge in your back pocket for when you see something, you're like, oh, these rotors are grooved, the slide pins might be stuck, so the piston might be stuck, um, you should check the material left on it, is it metal on metal? Like, you're able to kind of get that process started for whoever takes the job next. Yeah, interesting. Uh, continuing with kind of the dealership theme, uh, as a, a young female coming up in the industry, I'm curious as to 
how how welcoming was everybody for you coming in? I mean, it, it, like through your eyes, was it something where uh, you felt like you were treated differently, or was it like, hey, I'm just I'm part of the crew. This is part of it. Um, I kind of, I mean, obviously the first week or two, you've got kind of that like, oh, it's the newcomer. Oh, now you've got to learn everybody's name there. Um, <laughs> that awkward but, first week. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah. And it's, I don't know. It's a little strange because sometimes you feel as if like, oh, they're not taking me that seriously when they take, you know, my male coworker a little more seriously. Yeah. And it's just, unfortunately, it's something that's so ingrained into a lot of the automotive world's minds, especially the older ones, that, oh, I need to go and find a, a man. I need to go and find a man who will know about this. But something, something that was really, really helpful for me is that we have a female main shop technician named Abby. And shout out, Abby. Shout out, Abby. <laughs> um, she's awesome. She knows her stuff. She's confident. She gets her stuff done. She's just, she is on top of it. And so having that, like, role model and having, like, other people see that she can get stuff done. She's good at it. She's one of the best in the shop. It was it was a comfort for me, most definitely, because I was like, yeah, see? See? That's that's what I want to be like. Yeah. Well, and it gives you, you taught, you mentioned it earlier in the podcast, but having that person that you can look up to and, and really almost have uh, – have that example of somebody that's doing it, like somebody that's doing it at a high level. And it, it is, to me, it's so important. And we talk about that with mentorship a lot, but there's a lot of shops that don't have that female mentor, you know, to, to be able to bring other uh, young females up into the business. And I think you're really lucky in that scenario because I don't think that happens everywhere. And it's happening more and more as we, I think evolve as an industry, but that's pretty darn important that you've got that person in your life and that you, you happen to be at this dealership that does have that high level technician uh, that happens to be female. Yeah. And it, it most definitely helps because one of the things that you always hear in the automotive industry is we're hiring. And if you are a dealership or you're an independent that only like takes men seriously you just cut your workforce in half yeah you literally just, yeah literally you just made it so you're not going to get any of those female technicians looking for a job and you just lost out on a worker so it's it's so important that we have those role models not only to like show other people in the shop that women are just as capable but it's also to show other women that you're welcomed in the industry and that you have a job in the industry. And you can do it. Uh, like I've had female technicians that have worked for me that were incredible, uh, just uh, so talented and so good at what they do, meticulous, you know, every, like if I think that was a common theme amongst, and that's not just women, but good techs in general is they're meticulous and they're, you know, they take their craft seriously. But I had the pleasure of having uh, some women technicians worked for me that were uh, that times 10. They were so good. And it's so cool to see the evolution there. And within this one dealership that you're talking about, to have uh, that that almost guiding light for a young lady to come in and and be able to, to, to see somebody doing it, uh, I think that's just incredibly impactful. We need more of that in the industry as a whole. We need more... Uh, of Madeline in 10 years, right? Like Madeline in 10 <laughs> years is going to be a pretty darn good role model for others, I have a feeling. Yeah, I I certainly hope so. I mean, one of like, something that people ask all the time is like, what would you do to change the world? Or how would you make the world a better place? And it's not, mine isn't like as far-fetched as some people saying like, oh, I wanna um, stop world hunger or that kind of stuff. I just want to be, I want to be the person who makes another person confident, like who is 
willing to like look at me and see, yeah, I can do that. Like it's possible. That's just, that is how I want to change the world. You are mature beyond your years. That is a, <laughs> that is a really, really good piece of advice for anybody. I mean, if, if you can have a positive impact, if you're that manager, dealer, principal that's listening, you can have an impact on somebody's life like that. If you're a technician that's out there listening, you can make somebody's life more positive by really promoting that confidence. And, uh, you know, I, I, I think we've got a lot of really smart technicians that listen to this podcast and they're typically the ones, the demographic that listens to this podcast are typically those ones that are out there doing a good job mentoring young people and bringing them up and creating confidence for them. Because I, I know with young technicians, confidence can oftentimes be one of the biggest barriers. It, it's an, it can be an intimidating world to get into uh, in terms of, you know, you've you've got a 3,000 pound rolling machine that you're working on and if it doesn't stop and somebody's family gets hurt as a result, there, there's a pretty big impact there. So I, I think making sure that, that young people are confident and not overconfident, because I, I, I'd be curious to hear yeah. you, like, <laughs> are, do you feel like there's some young people that might be a little overconfident? And that's one thing I hear constantly from managers is that oh that these young people they just come in and they think they know everything they're trying to tell us what to do uh do you do you think that the, that's the case oh boy uh <laughs> yeah yeah i, mean, I don't want to paint all young people under this umbrella because i know it's not true yeah no definitely i've experienced this in a lot of my courses unfortunately but a lot of the young men they think oh yeah I know all about cars and I can name 30 different engines off the top of my head and like 14 cars that nobody has ever heard of. So I can do this and I don't need to ask for help. And then, oh no, I forgot to connect a brake line. <laughs> and you're rolling off the lift and oh goodness, I'm spewing brake fluid everywhere. Oh. Um, there's, there's a certain level of confidence that you need to have. Like I've done, I've done this before. I've seen it done before. I've done it in my class, I can do it, and I'll check over my work to make sure I've got everything good, and then I'm gonna test drive it. Just put it, just slapping everything together and being like, all right, I'm ready to go. Um, it's it's overconfident, it's, it's just, you're gonna get hurt if you're overconfident. And some of it I think is fake confidence, right? And maybe they're trying to act tough or whatever. I think I was in that regard when I was a young tech and, and it made me a, a bad tech or a poor tech, right? Was, you know, you go through the classes and you kind of, all right, I, you listen and you know, but the really confident young people understand theory. They understand how stuff works because th then if, if you don't understand how stuff works, you're not going to be able to fix it. You have to really be able to, to kind of have that visual image of, okay, this is working this way and we need to get electricity here. So we need to make sure that we're, you know, electricity is getting from point A to point B. I, like, I think when it's true confidence is when a young tech can go out and kind of see and under really confidently know that they understand a system or like, this is how a resistor works. This is how, you know, some of the, even the really, really basic stuff, if you don't know how that works, it, it, it makes it really hard to fix it. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, you hear all the time. I, I just got done with doing my drum breaks assignment. You hear all them breaks are good, they're awful, and it sucks so bad. But once you like actually learn and you like pay attention to it a little more, it's not that bad. <laughs> it's, I mean, obviously it's a little more difficult than your average disc setup because of the different parts. But if you know the theory of it, you know how it's supposed to work, what the different springs are doing in there and what kind of style of drum break it is. I mean, it's not that bad. <laughs> it's not. I was one of them that would always complain about doing uh, drum breaks. I, uh, for whatever reason, either felt like I was gonna get my finger snapped by one of the springs or something like that. And, uh, you know, it, 
you'd watch some veteran technician that had been around for 20, 30 years that just whip them through, no problem. And uh, I, drum brakes were one of those, especially with some of the more advanced setups where uh, you could get yourself frustrated pretty easily. But if you sit back, you're right, sit back, think about the theory of operation in order for this, uh, the drum to expand or the, the shoes to expand, you need to have this lever. If you just understand that, you'll understand, yeah. you know, it's not quite as intimidating, right? No, it really isn't. I mean, it's it's another thing, like, questions are demonized in the industry, which I'm so glad that my instructors are so welcoming of questions. You've got some great instructors. I know them. Yes, yeah, yes. like, they, it allows you to learn because questions, questions are not a sign of failure. It's just a sign of ignorance. And ignorance is not a bad thing. And it's knowing really, you don't know something, yes, and yeah. being open, yes, yes, 100%. So making sure that you're doing something correctly and properly is so important because if you never ask questions, you're never going to learn. I had a boss once that said, it, it, you don't know what you don't know and that you can't fix it. Like you can learn and educate yourself better to, to get there. Uh, but if you don't know it, you don't know it. And yeah. you don't fake like you know it. Just admit it, learn it, and move on. Because th that you're going to be miles ahead if you just take that approach. Yeah, that's like that's the same thing with the overconfidence route. If you pretend like you know it because you don't want to ask the question, that's where people start thinking, oh, overconfident child. <laughs> <Like> <laughs> Video is becoming an increasingly important tool for recruiting technicians. Rentray Shop Talk videos gives technicians an inside look at what it's like to work at top shops across the country. Shops share all kinds of authentic, unscripted videos that gives an inside look at the shop's culture, people, facilities, and benefits of working there. You can also filter videos by location and category. To check out what it's like to work at shops in your area, visit app.rentway.com slash shop talk. All right, I want to talk about your your future. Um, what are your goals in in this in this field? Like, what what is it that you want to work your way to? I think it to me, looking at a young person, it's so exciting to see that the whole world's out in front of you, right? You've got you're a smart young lady that I think is going to make an impact on this industry. Uh, how do you see yourself or what like what do you see as far as your career path what what are your aspirations so after i get my technical diploma i would like to move into being a main shop technician for a few years really master that kind of stuff i would like to be asc certified in that range of time and then maybe after a few years i would either go back for hybrid and electric vehicles or i'd go back for diesel because i know matc has an amazing diesel program yes they do they do they certainly do <laughs> and i mean the instructors there are also fantastic so that's also like the draw of it and maybe i would like to go into different like there's just there's so many avenues that you can go into and one thing I'd like to say for any like company out there is if your local technical college is having a job fair for its automotive or like just automotive collisions, like diesel, any of that, go to it. Yeah. Because a lot of the times people do not know that your company is there. For example, I just became aware of a company that does all of the electrical wiring on cruisers for um, the police force and I never thought that was a job I guess it just never like came to mind but if you if you put your like company out there it's gonna open up a lot of opportunities for people like now I was thinking I was thinking like wow that's that's really cool um yeah so I mean like diesel like I uh, also at the job fair yesterday, I met a company who does just diesel repairs, like um, ginormous, what is it, Peterbilt, Vanderbilt? Yeah, yeah Peterbilt, like, yeah. Peterbilt, yeah. 
just these giant equipment and it's just diesel and that's like that's also pretty cool like i just didn't know that there was exclusively diesel shops yeah so it's it's just it's opened up like a whole opportunity for me and i mean i don't want to limit myself because a lot of times when people make a life plan they fret over it and they're like i have to stick to it and i have to do it everything that i had planned out like 10 years ago and but you're not always the same person you were 10 years ago so keeping keeping your future open and just having that like yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna be a technician for a few years you know bring in some income and then i'm going to go back to school maybe or i'm going to look for maybe a higher up job a different field it's it's easy to keep your options open i i love a few different things you said there but one that i would point out too is you talked about being present at a career fair and the importance of that because that you know i think a lot of people in the industry might take for granted how you know we've we've been around it for a long time we have a pretty good understanding of all of the businesses that are in this industry but for through a young person's eyes you've not seen a lot of the industry and i remember i grew up in a really small town i had no idea that there were really any <laughs> any other shops besides my dad's small independent shop in the small town that I grew up in. But, you know, I, I say that kind of uh, kidding, but also like once you get out there, there's so much to this industry and to this world that maybe we don't do a good job as an industry at explaining to young people that there are really cool opportunities out there. And you working in a dealership right now sets you up for so many cool things. And even at that dealership, right? Like, I think about, you know, that veteran tech Abby that you're talking about, that uh, having her go out and talk to high schoolers or have her go talk to a tech school, uh, whatever it is, that helps maybe that that person that's on the fringe, maybe that, that young female that's in high school right now that's like, I can't do that because that's a man's industry. But, oh, here's this rock star female technician that's just killing it and getting out in front of those people, that helps the dealership because that helps maybe bring in a whole different level of talent that you haven't had in the past. I, I just think there's so many opportunities for, for uh, dealerships and shops to tell their stories because that we've got some cool stories to share. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, unfortunately, there's a whole stereotype around like different mechanic shops and all of that of like how they're they're scumbags and they steal money from you. And I mean, yes, there are shops, unfortunately, like that still. Yeah. But like having like showing that you have a div diverse workforce and like not to mention having like a woman in the shop or even like a woman service advisor, it helps other women um, feel more confident that they're not getting scammed yeah. because it's it's not so much where it's like oh you don't trust any man but it's like you see someone who has most likely had some of the same experiences that you have had it makes you more comfortable and it helps you understand more like i mean a lot of the times people don't necessarily know what's wrong with their car and when they need to get it replaced they need it to be explained to them like why they need to get it replaced is it a danger is it affecting performance is it reducing your gas mileage like and sometimes when it's um like a man talking to you feels a little condescending sometimes <laughs> <laughs> well it, it, it is true right i can't put myself in your shoes because i've never had to go through that right i've never had to go through the experience of being a female going into a male dominated shop uh or you know even maybe being uh taken advantage of or the, the feeling that you were taken advantage of um so i i think there's just so much impact in that and not only for your dealership but you know having you on this podcast and having others that we can kind of promote that are really doing a good job with this, I think is super important to the, the health of our industry. Like we we need more Madelines in the industry. We need more of, of that type of person that's a young, smart person who could have easily gone into a number of different fields, but 
was drawn to this business uh, because she thought it was pretty cool. Like, we need a lot more of that. Yeah. I mean, what's the saying? If you love what you do, you never work a day in your life. I mean, sometimes it definitely feels like people don't love what they're doing, and it really shows in their work ethic. Yeah. They're, they're I kind mean, of, if your yeah. heart's not into the job you're doing, you're just, you're not being the best you can be, and you're going to cut corners, and you're going to do that. But if you... If you really, if you're fascinated by what you're doing, you love what you're doing, you understand what you're doing, you're going to overall perform better. You're not going to cut corners. You're going to be more detail oriented. And that's just, that's so important to understand. Well, we're, we're about up on our time. So I want, I want to maybe touch on a few more things before we're done. Um, one quick piece of advice that I give to a lot of, of young techs is, don't always rely on somebody else to provide education for you, right? Look for opportunities at training, look for opportunities to educate yourself. Maybe there's a book out there or a YouTube channel. There's some really, really good educational YouTube content out there right now. And it, it sounds like you're already familiar with a lot of it, but uh, yeah. I, I think for you being able to go out and seek that, like aggressively seek, that additional education over and above what any school or dealership is going to teach you is what sets the best apart from everybody else. So that I just wanted to add that because I yeah. feel like you 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 have a thirst for knowledge, and I think that's something you can't teach. Like that is so cool, and for me to be able to now know you and hopefully watch your career progress, uh, I think is just going to be so unbelievably cool. Yeah, I mean, you, it's so easy nowadays. We live in the digital age where you can look things up with a few button pushes and you're off. I mean, like Chris Fix on YouTube. Yeah. Like, he is such an incredible resource, especially for like, it doesn't matter what level technician you're at. Sometimes you're on a vehicle and you're like, oh gosh, I've never seen this before. <laughs> especially those German vehicles, but you see someone else do it. And especially someone who, I mean, they set up the camera nicely. They are thorough with explaining. It's, it's a world of difference. I mean, you always have those resources available to you and YouTube's free. You don't have to pay for it. Yeah. And there, there are, I, I couldn't agree more. I still tinker in my garage uh, a lot and, I, I still refer I'd like to YouTube videos and, and trying to understand theory. And it is, it's really cool. I mean, some of the people that put stuff out there, they've made livings off of it, off of doing that. Um, and it's, it's awesome. Uh, it, I think it's really helpful for people. And again, another way to get people interested in the industry and maybe show a, a young Madeline that, Hey, you can do this stuff like this. This is stuff that you uh, have the talent for, and the more you learn, the faster you're going to do this stuff, the better you're going to do this stuff. And we have so many resources to be able to do that. So I, uh, I, I think you're, you're uh, one, I think you're on the right path. Like you're, you're going to be an outstanding technician. I can tell just in talking to you uh, that you, you think things through. Uh, I feel like when I talk to a young technician, I have a pretty good grasp on whether they're going to understand stuff uh, or you know, if they assume they understand stuff, but don't actually understand the stuff. So uh, that's a huge compliment to you. You've, you've, uh, you're doing some really great things. You're going to continue to do great things. And, and I really hope that you view yourself as a, uh, as a leader, because I think that's what you're doing. You're setting the stage for maybe a whole different level of, of technician to come in and, and that, female that young female that's out there not seeing that it's possible you're, you're kind of setting the tone uh for that so i did want to give you a, a huge uh a huge compliment because i think you're deserving of it yeah thank you <laughs> yeah all right so uh we'll have to have you back on the show in uh maybe a year or something and follow your progress through the years i think that might be something that's cool uh but any uh before we go any Word of advice for, for young technicians out there. Don't be afraid to ask. I've said that multiple times throughout here, but it's 
you need to like not just like the confidence to do your work but the confidence to admit that you're wrong or that you don't know what you're doing it doesn't make you any less of a great tech it just means that this is just something you've never experienced before and if you ask around you have less of a chance of screwing it up it's just don't be afraid of those questions <laughs> I think that's good advice for any age, but specifically young technicians, that really, really hits home. So uh, thank you so much for joining us today, Madeline. It was a, a true pleasure to, to be able to pick your brain over the course of this hour and um, uh, really, really looking forward to kind of following your career along and seeing how you do. Yeah, thanks.